My laptop, which is a Lenovo, um, has actually basically been worn out. I've used it every day for years and uh, I've got keys super glued on, I've got uh, a USB port that doesn't work anymore and, and so on. So I've decided to buy a new one and this time it's uh, an upgradable repairable framework and uh, it's quite nice. Every, there's a lot of um, removable bits. You can take some of the covers out and um, you can remove the uh, trackpad here. Just that. There's a trackpad there which can come out and when you do that it turns off the keyboard so you can remove the keyboard while the thing's still running. So uh, it's going to be interesting. But one thing I didn't like was um, <laughs> The keys here on the arrows, you've got home and end and page up and page down and they're shifted so you've got to press the function key to actually get those to work. So I wasn't very happy with that and so I bought the um, macro RGB keyboard. So there's a macro pad that you can buy which slots in here and um, when I tried configuring it, it didn't actually work. You need a web uh, application to run and it didn't configure it and I want to sort of have a bit more control over it. And it's not open source hardware but there is firmware based on QMK. So what I've done, this is actually running an RP2040 so I'm quite familiar with that. What I've done is I've removed the QMK code and I've got my own firmware running on here and it sits on top of, top of tiny USB. So at the moment it's set up to do it's going to be difficult to see that, but it's set up to do unshifted arrow keys, which are unshifted here, it's just a copy. But up here I've got a row of keys. The green ones are home and end, and the um, purpley pinky ones are page up, page down, and they're unshifted. So you don't actually have to uh, press the function key, you can just do a home and end, and um, that all works. It also um, turns off, when you shut the lid, there's a signal, sleep signal in the interface and um, it turns the LEDs off and puts the RP2040 into sleep mode and then when you open it it comes back where you left it. I've also got different modes here so if I press that key it tells me over here that it uh, shifted to a different mode and now the keys will turn red when I press them. If I do it again you get green and you can probably guess that if I do it again you get blue and then the next mode is back to the um, keys that I want. It presents itself as a USB um, keyboard and um, the code that I based it on actually also presents a mass storage device so you can you can read a file that's on there and I've left that in at the moment I might want to put instructions or something in there or I might just remove it but it also presents a uh, serial USB and that's what I've got running here there's there's a CLI and I can uh, interact with it and do various things and I'm hoping to put some sort of scripting in there so I can do more complicated macros. Um, at the moment I'm just using it for debug really. The um, key scanning routine that I've, I've used in here is actually, well not the scanning, the scanning is, is tied to the hardware but the debounce part is actually pulled out of the Scion Organizer 2 Recreate. Um, I've used the same code to do the debounce there. So it's up and running now and um, it all seems to work. There's um, You can press keys and do things. Um, so the keys work and the key bounce is good. The um, key response is faster than it was originally. I've sped that up so now it's very similar to the uh, keyboard over here, the main one, which is also RP2040 and uses the same QMK code as the macro pad did before it was running mine. Um, I found where the um, boot signal is so I've got a couple of wires here with a switch and a resistor and that can um, reset the or put the RP2040 into um, mass storage mode. If you pull this out that powers the so you pull the trackpad out that powers the keyboards down if you hold the button in and then power it up you'll see that nothing happens and that's now in uh, download mode so if I, I've got to use a mouse here, if I move over here what I can do is I can, well I can build the code with a make 
and it's built. And now I can copy it to the uh, normal mass storage RP2040 um, well, it's mass storage device, isn't it? You copy the file over, and that'll program it, start it up, and there's the code running again. So that's that's a new download of code. I can also do that if I just go to the CLI, just like on the recreate. If you do an exclamation mark, it puts it in mass storage mode, and because the GPIOs have all turned to inputs, there's uh, there's a line that tells the LED driver to turn its LEDs on. That's now off, so it goes blank. But again, if you uh, go over here and copy the code over, dunk, and it will come up again, so it's running the code again. It's interesting, actually, when you do that, because the GPIOs turn to an output again, enable the LEDs, and the LEDs come up in the pattern they were in when it went off, because the LED driver is never actually turned off. But yeah, it's working a lot better and I've actually started using these keys and they're a lot better than the shifted ones here to the extent that actually when I uh, put it in mass storage device uh, mode I, um, I feel a bit sort of bad because I can't access the keys because the RP2040 is not running the program so I'm getting so used to it it's a bit of a pain editing when I'm in mass storage mode but yeah, um, quite like that it's working quite well.